we're inside how to perform deck inspections course under connectors and fasteners. A home inspector could note missing connectors and fasteners in the inspection report and lag screws and bolts. They should all have washers and the bolt should have nuts and washers. Now this illustration here of a hammer hitting a fastener, that's a hammer test. The framing members of a deck are only as reliable as the fasteners, the connectors between them. And using a hammer to tap on the fasteners may provide some helpful information to the inspector using the hammer. Depending on how the deck was built, vital connections may have degraded over time. Issues with wobbly railings or loose stairs and ledgers that appear to be pulling away from the structure are all causes for concern. And the tightness of fasteners could be checked using a hammer test. If it's not possible to reach both sides of a bolt, it may be struck with a hammer. The ring of a hammer strike will sound hollow with the vibration if the fastener is loose and will sound solid if the connection is tight. And the hammer test is very subjective. So the inspector should hammer test bolts that can be confirmed as tight or loose and compare those sounds of the rings to develop a control during the inspection. Corrosion of connectors and fasteners. All screws, bolts, and nails should be hot dipped galvanized, stainless steel, silicone bronze, copper, zinc coated, or corrosion resistant, according to code. Nails and glue arm rivets should, not, should be hot dipped galvanized. And alternatively, they could be stainless steel, silicone bronze, or copper. Bolts and lag screws, including nuts and washers, should be hot dipped galvanized. And alternatively, they could be stainless steel, silicone bronze, and copper. Now, typical joist hangers, straps and hold downs, rafter clips, and other connectors intended for interior use only are coated with G90 weights of galvanization. All metal, metal connectors for a deck on the outside should be G185, zinc coated galvanized steel or post hot dipped galvanized or stainless steel. Metal connectors and fasteners can corrode over time, especially if a product is, wasn't built correctly when it was installed with galvanization. Corrosion of fasteners affects both the fastener and the wood surrounding it. As the fastener corrodes, it gets smaller and deteriorates, and the, the void or space around it gets bigger. Lateral connections. Lateral loads should be transferred to the ground or to a structure capable of transmitting them to the ground. The code, the 2021 IRC, requires decks supported by the attachment to an exterior wall to be positively anchored to the primary structure and be designed for both vertical and lateral loads. The vertical and lateral loads referred to are code prescribed loads such as dead loads, live, wind, and seismic. Attachment only to the band joists may not be sufficient for lateral loads. Positive anchorage of the deck joist to the house framing as shown in this figure here addresses this potential failure. So we have a hold down or tension device on the deck joist passing through the building envelope to the floor joist on the inside of the house. Where lateral load connections are installed at the deck, the inspector should observe hold down tension devices installed in at least two deck connections and they should be installed within 24 inches of each end. Each device should have a stress design capacity of 1,500 pounds. Can't really tell that during a home inspection. You should look for something that is providing a lateral load connection to the primary structure. For new or replacement decks on existing homes, builders or homeowners most often remove interior wall or ceiling covering in order to install these large hold down tension devices. Here's another type of lateral load connection that's permitted to be installed at the deck. It's a surface mounted device and the hold down, hold down tension devices should be installed at least four locations on the deck. And each device has a strength capacity of 750 pounds and one at least 24 inches from the end. So it looks like this, common 
lag screw going through band joist, rim joist, floor joist of the deck here, floor system of the house and wall system of the house here. This is the lateral load connection. This little device down here and it's screwed in and fastened securely to the primary structure. There should be four of these. Here's the other device. Two of these are needed and four of these are needed. These devices achieve an acceptable lateral load connection between the deck and the primary structure. With the installation of these surface mounted hold down devices that are spread out along the length of the ledger and do not require opening up the interior wall or ceilings nearby. These devices achieve an acceptable lateral load connection between the deck and primary structure, the house, with the installation of these surface mounted or hold down connection devices and are spread out along the length of the ledger and do not require opening up the interior wall or ceiling spaces nearby. These devices provide a positive connection to the floor framing in order to resist lateral loads. Look for something like this, at least four of them spread out, or something like this. It's for lateral load connection.